Welcome to Real Physics. Today I want to talk about the error of time. And there are basically two ideas. The first one, which I don't believe is true, is that entropy is always increasing and therefore the increase of entropy somehow defines the error of time. That idea was put forward also, among others certainly, by Erwin Schrödinger, whom I highly appreciate for a variety of reasons. However, I think in this particular aspect, his intuition failed. The second way of explaining the error of time, which is much more intuitive and logical from my perspective, is it's related to charge and matter and antimatter. That's, by the way, the only conceptually interesting and valuable idea of quantum electrodynamics. I think Feynman has introduced that concept that a positron is just an electron traveling backwards in time. You have this symmetry conventionally called CPT symmetry, charge conjugation and time reversal. But well, I think it's the very natural and logical way to explain things. You have the error of time defined by the fact that an electron is negatively charged and a proton positively. And if time would run backwards, we would just live in a world of antimatter. Phrased in another way, that's also the reasonable explanation of antimatter, in my view, why we have matter and not anti antimatter. Well, precisely because time is running in the direction it runs. So you don't need all this nonsense of symmetry breaking between matter and antimatter in the early universe. I mean, symmetry breaking is something interesting in physics of complex systems, but not very convincing from a fundamental perspective or to explain the error of time or whatever. So I don't think this is useful. And it's just very natural. The idea that the direction of time is defined by charge. And of course, there are two issues. I mean, I really cannot prove that. It's just a very strong intuitive feeling and a conjecture, which I think is reasonable. And of course, second, there are a lot of problems which are not yet solved. I mean, you have, of course, to calculate the number 1836, the ratio of the proton and the electron mass. And presumably only by doing that, you will arrive at a true explanation of the nature of elementary particles. But well, I mean, I think it's very reasonable to assume that if time would be reversed, we would just have a proton with negative charge and an electron with positive charge. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it. And if you're interested in that kind of fundamental physics, subscribe to this channel.